The indictment last month of eight young men in the hazing death of a fraternity pledge in Ohio reminds us the practice is far from gone, which means the list of mothers and fathers facing unspeakable loss continues to grow, as Lee Cowan explains. For Ray Ann Groover and Evelyn Piazza, Mother's Day has never been the same since 2017 because that's the year they lost their sons, Timothy Piazza and Max Groover. Both were away at college, Timothy at Penn State, Max at Louisiana State. Both had pledged fraternities, and both were hazed. This is our last family picture taken together at the Rose Bowl, January 2nd in 2017. Tim was a big what happened to their sons often becomes a topic of conversation on college campuses. This picture is the last picture I have of my son and I. Like here at the University of Pittsburgh last year, where Evelyn and Rayanne told their stories to a room filled with kids who would have been their son's peers. A day and a half ago, he was alive and happy. What happened at that fraternity house? And when the nurse told me to kiss my baby goodbye, and you're just looking at your son laying there, thinking, I can't believe this is it. This isn't right. Not like this. It's just not right. Tim's Beta Theta Pi brothers had forced him to drink until he was falling down drunk. The last time, it's believed, down a flight of stairs, suffering a traumatic brain injury. No one called 911 for nearly 12 hours. At the end of Max's night at Phi Delta Theta, his lips had turned blue, and with six times the legal limit of alcohol in his system, his brothers left him to sleep it off on a couch. He never woke up. Just knowing some, someone could be that mean to someone else and be that mean to your child, and that's how your child died, was with somebody treating him so horribly. And for what? To join a fraternity? And I want to thank you guys so much for oh, sharing the story. Talking about their pain has become almost a full-time job for their husbands, too, Jim Piazza and Steve Groover. In less than 90 minutes, Tim had the equivalent of 18 drinks. And then they let him lie there as he was slowly dying right in front of their eyes. They just can feel it. They can relate to two mothers up there telling these stories because they think about their moms. Max was forced to consume 18 to 20 pulls off of those bottles which has been calculated to be at least 32 ounces of diesel, of grain alcohol. As many as 150,000 students have heard their message so far. Many brought to tears by it, like at this Greek leadership conference in Indianapolis last year. We just feel like we're the puppets at the end of the strings, and those boys are just up there guiding us, showing us the path. It's really tough to hear, which I guess is really the point. When you're talking about hazing, it just should not be sugar-coated or lightly talked about. That said, though, you don't preach, though. You really just tell your stories. If we can get them to feel it, I think they'll, they'll do something. Why is it such an intractable problem? To put it succinctly, for many groups, pledging equals hazing, hazing equals pledging. Hank Neuauer is Professor Emeritus at Franklin College in Indiana. He's written five books on the subject of hazing, his research uncovered at least one hazing-related death every single year since 1959. and some years, there were many more. It tarnishes the Greek system, tarnishes our universities, and is totally preventable. 2020 passed with some close calls, but no hazing fatalities. A pleasant surprise for such a dark year. But unfortunately, the same can't be said for 2021. So far, two deaths are being investigated as the result of hazing. Stone Folds, a sophomore at Ohio's Bowling Green State University, and Adam Oaks, a freshman at Virginia Commonwealth University. Usually when a death occurs, there's circling of the wagons. You often find that lawyers and parents are phoned before 911. I could point to quite a few deaths that didn't have to happen if somebody had only made the call. If they weren't worried about getting in trouble themselves. If they weren't trying to cover their butts. Around 700,000 undergraduates call themselves members of a fraternity or a sorority, but it's fraternities where hazing is most acute. 
According to a 2008 study, 73 percent of fraternity and sorority members reported being hazed. And the Piazzas and the Groovers knew that real change had to come from within the Greek system itself. That's meeting with the enemy in a lot of ways, right? I had a pretty terse exchange with Judd Horace initially. I just started with I was sorry, and I think I said it 20 times. Judson Horace is the president and CEO of the North American Interfraternity Conference, a national governing association which represents 58 fraternities. We have the same common enemy, it's hazing. To combat that enemy, grieving parents, along with leaders of national fraternity and sororities, are now coming together in an unlikely alliance, the Anti-Hazing Coalition. You know, the parents bring such a level of moral authority to the issue, but they can also get legislatures to do things, college universities, national organizations. They are inviting people in to be a part of the solution. One of their aims is to change both state and federal laws to make hazing just as illegal and just as unacceptable as drunk driving. I'll have a two meaningless deaths and a paralyzation from the waist down. What are you really asking for when you drink before you drive? Much the way Mothers Against Drunk Driving did back in the 80s and 90s. It took mad a decade. Yeah. So this is going to take a while. Currently, 44 states have passed laws prohibiting hazing, but most treat it only as a misdemeanor. But that's changing. Just recently, in the alcohol-related death of Stone Foltz, that pledge at Bowling Green State University, eight students were charged, and many with felonies. The End All Hazing Act was also reintroduced in the Senate this past March. It would mandate colleges and universities disclose any hazing incidents to both parents and potential pledges alike. This way, a parent or student can use that as a tool for good decision making. And then you can say, oh, Beta Theta Pi was suspended four years ago for hazing for a year. Maybe we shouldn't consider that one. Inside the Greek system, they say they've seen some change as well. You see so many chapters, fraternities mostly, but sororities as well, that are being shut down for periods of time now because people are reporting, because the universities are saying we can't have that. I always ask folks, you know, who in here is for hazing? You know, not a hand goes up. The hazers are cowards, they're not going to raise their hands. But the point is, they're in the minority. Let that empower you to stand up and make change. The Groovers and the Piazzas are keeping the pressure on, talking about their boys in any way they can, until the idea of hazing is seen as a sign of weakness instead of some twisted proof of loyalty. We'll say these stories as many times as we have to if it's changing the culture. You're releasing some of that pain when you talk and hopefully we're effective and people are listening. So it's worth it.